Well, hello everyone. This is Ben Townsend at Tracker Products. It's been a little while since I've done one of these webinars, so hopefully I'm not too rusty here today. I appreciate everyone showing up to learn something about SAFE. And I'm hoping most of you already know all this content, but if you don't, uh, today you're gonna learn a few things. And let me start out with an introduction with me. I have Megan Mason. Hello, Megan. Hey, Ben, how are you? Good. And Megan is is she is not with a police department. She's actually with a, a private entity in the state of New York. I won't even throw your name out unless you want to throw out who you work with. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, yeah, I am the national evidence manager for a failure analysis company. So what we do is fire investigations, water and mold investigations, building collapses, sinkholes, um, roof collapses and hail damage, all of that good stuff. But bottom line is you're dealing with evidence. So while you're not dealing with guns, drugs, and money, you still do have to collect and track and process a lot of stuff. That's correct. That's that's why you being here is very applicable, even if the stuff you are tracking is very different. And while we are on the introduction, just for everybody's edification, I'm curious, how many different locations, you said you're national evidence manager, how many different locations do you store evidence at? And I'm just curious if you could even share what, where some of those are at. When you say national, is, this, is it international, US national, and just maybe focus on that for a minute. Yeah, so it's mainly U.S. national. Um, right now, our, mer our major storage locations are here in Voorheesville, New York. I've got one in Charlotte, North Carolina, Dallas, Texas, Tampa, Florida, Redmond, Washington. We're working on one in California, and then those are the big locations. Now, each fire investigator, when they collect evidence, they need a secure location immediately. So they also have smaller storage lockers in their location that they can securely put something until they can transfer it to a long-term location. Excellent. And to real, so is there anybody else that works with you in evidence or when you are the national evidence administrator, you, you do it all for everywhere? I do it all. I do all the billing. I do have um, someone in each location that helps, but that's not their main job. Um, so I end up helping them a lot. And I'm just curious, this is really going to put you on the spot, but do you have any idea how many individual pieces of evidence are in the system right now that are stored at all these locations? I can get that to you really quickly, but I know... Okay. See, that's, putting, that's putting you on the spot. See, I should have given you a heads up. Hey, I'm going to ask you for some statistics and give you just a minute, but I guess we'll find out how well you uh, work under a little bit of pressure here. Let's see. I, do you want how many projects or how many evidence items? How many evidence items? So just do a search on items and, and, and maybe just set it to active as like checked in items where your status is checked in. I just, I don't know if you're talking 10, a thousand, a million items. We're just trying to get a ballpark of what you're dealing with. Absolutely. See, this, this is the, the absolute definition of pressure right here. <laughs> it's not too much pressure because you can't see me. No, I cannot see you. You're right. But I, I do appreciate you digging into that. And you know what? I can keep moving along as, as you work on that number right there. Yeah, it's just it's going a little slow. Uh, let's okay. see. I have 2,775. Excellent. Okay. Well, good. That gives you an idea. And so while that number might not sound like a staggering number, when you spread it out amongst a lot of locations, you know, just the the sort of breadth of all of it is is a lot. So, well, good. I appreciate you sharing that. And everybody, that's, that's Megan Mason. And I've asked her to be on here today because as I was doing a little bit of research preparing for, for tagging to talk about here today, um, I, she was one of our users that is using it as proficiently as I would like to see it used. And so I asked her if she'd come on here and, and, and give some of her experience using it and, and to talk. And she was very willing to do that. And so I'm very, very happy to have Megan here with me today. And Megan, as I told you earlier, you feel free to jump in at any time. If you have something that you think is applicable at any point, you just jump in. And in and, and a little bit, we're going to show your screen. She's actually going to walk you through her system and how she uses tagging to give you a bit of a feel. Because it's one thing for me to show it from my end. It's another thing when you can actually see a real client using it. It makes it way more valuable. So, Megan, thank you so much for joining us here today. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, let's start out. The first thing I do want to do is I'm going to launch a poll here. So if everybody will look at their screen right now, we have 20 something people that are in here at the moment. 
And I am curious before I get started, just to ask a couple of questions. They're very simple. Do you use tags in SAFE? And I even gave an answer is I have no idea what a tag is. So I'm looking to see, do you use tags in SAFE? Yes, no, or no idea what a tag is. Okay, so I cannot see how many, oh, it looks like, okay, so half the people have responded already. The bulk of you are using tags in SAFE, which is good. And I've got a couple of people that, uh, so now more are rolling in. So I've got, I'm getting ready to close it out. So this is your last chance to answer the poll and then we're gonna move on. Okay, so two thirds of you have responded. 67% said, yep, I use tags. 17% said no and 17 said, I have no idea what a tag is. So the good news is I've got some people to work with that don't use tags. We're gonna cover all aspects of it though. So even if you use them, hang in there because we're gonna show you some things maybe you aren't doing, okay? So let me go on to the next one. And my next question is, and this is gonna get really specific. If you use tags, have you color coded your tags? So if you use tags, have you color coded them? And yes or no, and same thing, and no idea. I have no idea what a tag is. Now, I'll tell you, the reason I asked this question because when I see color-coded tags, in my mind, like, like you really know what you're doing with these things. So it's not critical that you color code your tags. If you have no idea what color-coded tags are, hang in there. I think it's, it's in fact, when I, look at, when I looked at Megan earlier, when I brought up her site and looked at her tagging, I saw all these different colors and I was like, yes, that's who I need to have on here. Okay, so only 36% of the people said yes, they use colors, 45 said no, and 18 were in the same boat of I don't use tags. Very last question I wanna ask, let me launch this one out. Do you have a dashboard widget or widgets that show tag results? So you've got a window on your dashboard, it shows you a list of things um, that your tags are applied to. So of course you would have to use tags to even know what this is, but we're gonna get into all of this also. All right, so almost half of you are now saying, yes, you have a dashboard widget. Um, over half of you are no. So again, the great news here is whether it's using colors or whether it's using a dashboard widget or just getting started using tags, we've got, we've got room to maneuver here today. So right off the bat, let me give you a couple of statistics that I learned today while I was digging into tag usage within our software. Two thirds of all active tracker clients use tags. So the bulk of our clients are using tags. The average client that uses a tag has 20 active tags. The average client has 20 tags. Our top 10 clients that are using tags have, got, have created over 50% of all the tags ever created. So our top client that is using the most tags has 435 tags in their system. Now, that's the top one. It drops off precipitously right after that. In fact, I think uh, Megan was in the top 10. She was number 10 at 120 something tags. And so once you get down below the top 50 clients, you know, you're down into the, the individual digits of number of, of tags being used. It doesn't matter because I will say one of our top 10 clients, I was sort of surprised by it. And when I looked at their actual tags, I realized that they were from forever ago and their officers were creating tags. So a lot of tags were created improperly and they're not even usable. So that client's not even using tags, although they showed up in the top 10. So it did meet all my criteria for tagging and, and that's what it was. Um, the last thing that I find interesting, and we're going to dig into this today, that only two clients are out of our, so even all the people on here that might be using tags, only two clients have used them in a workflow. And so Megan would not be one of those either. And so Megan's going to learn something here today. Megan, do you have any idea what workflow is in our software? I do. 
I do. Okay. So, but, but you've not turned on any tags for that. And that's no knock against you. Well, again, only two clients even have workflow turned on with tags. And so I'm going to dig in a little bit into the workflow and find out if for those of you that are using tags that are color coding that, you know, are using it at a high level, maybe there's still something to learn within applying workflow to this stuff. Cause I will say as, as I step into the actual software now and, and get into to tagging itself, I think tagging is unbelievably important to use in the system. Um, and I, I state that pretty emphatically. I, I, I don't have any great reason other than I just think it's so important to make sure you can use. And I think Megan is going to echo that when she gets into her use of the software here in just a little bit. You need to know how to use tags because I think when it comes to disposition and processing evidence, especially when you've got a lot of stuff going on, it's just really important to figure out how those things work. Now, let me. I, last time I did a webinar talking about tagging, I didn't even explain what a tag was. I think there was just an assumption that everybody was using it, although now I understand not everybody is using tagging. It's the fact some people don't even know what a tag is, okay? So the easiest way for me to explain what a tag is is think of social media, and you see it all the time, the hashtags at the bottom of it. In fact, I sort of have a running thing with my kids where when a comment is made out loud, especially if they don't like it, they usually put, you know, behind it, they'll say audibly, hashtag no importance or hashtag don't care. You know, if you've heard, and again, as an old person like me, you know, you may not be used to that, but if you've heard your kids running around yelling hashtag this and hashtag that, what that ultimately is doing when you're using it in a social media environment, if, if, if you tag a post and say, hey, whatever the tag is, you'll notice if you click on that tag, it gives you all sorts of other, other social media posts that are relevant to that same tag being used. So that's why tags are created. They're easy way to uh, apply additional information that makes it easy for somebody else to click on it and see things in regard to that tag. So tagging in our software is really no different. You're entering information about a case or an evidence or a person, and now you've got an additional field where you can put a tag in there so that if down the road you want to bring up everything related to that, you can do it. Now let me give you an example, maybe a real world example would be um, maybe found property, okay? So when you enter an item into the system, there's a drop down menu where you put in, what is this type of evidence? And you can select found property, you can put safekeeping, whatever values you've turned on, but you have a drop down menu of those. But what if you want to be more specific than just saying found keeping and you, want, and you don't want to add more items to the list um, in fact, most of our clients, the tags are only used by administrators. The officers are not using tagging. And that, that goes back to the relevance of tagging. It's just a great mechanism for searching and sorting all of your evidence. So you may create a piece of found property and, and you could put a tag in there that says, you know, this is found property um, clothing. Or you could have another tag for this is found property backpack. And so, you know, again, you as an administrator are the only one using it. So instead of having a drop down menu that has all of those codes in it, you know, to where the officer has to say what kind of found property it is, you could go in and create these additional tags so that later down the road you could say, hey, show me all my evidence that is found property, but I want to base it on that tag, not that drop down menu value. And so I'm just curious, uh, Megan, since I, I really want you to jump in and talk. Can you give me an example of a couple of tags that maybe you use the most frequently and why do you use those tags the most frequently? Sure, so I use tags mainly for billing purposes of evidence. Since I am billing all of the evidence in the United States, um, I need the fire investigators and the other people to help me as far as billing goes. So the one that I use the most is, um, I just name it charge, small, medium, large um, storage yeah. fee. And then okay. I'm able to do my billing off of that. I gotcha. So so you do you run report, I'm just curious, do you run a report on all your evidence that's small, medium, or large, or, or do you just export that for a specific client and then you apply a value to each one of those things? So each one of those, it's we bill for evidence storage based on the size of the evidence. So if they okay. tell me to bill it at a small rate, then you know I know the price tag that goes along with that, and then I can put it into our billing system. Gotcha. Okay. 
And that makes that, that makes total sense there. So now hopefully everybody understands a little bit about what a tag is and why the heck would this would even be used. And I will say, as this thing sort of starts to, you know, fold out here and we, we begin to dig into it a little bit deeper, you may find more reasons for that. But that that just gets the ball rolling as to why tags are even there. Now, one other thing I do want to point out um, as we're going along, if you have questions, there is a question window inside the GoTo uh, webinar panel over on the right and you can post uh, questions as we're going through here and I'll I'll do my best to keep an eye on all those questions that are coming in I'd love it if somebody that's out there would mind just posting a hello in there I just want to make sure this is working I just want to see that one single question does come in and I'm now wondering if it's not on. Oh, no, we got it. All right. Now we got it. All right. So a couple of people have said hello. So I do know the question window is working as as we are going. Uh, please let me know if you have any uh, uh, questions. All right. I, I, somebody has already said would love to hear what other people are tagging since I don't use them. Uh, in fact, I will say I'm gonna. I love putting people on the spot, Megan. I'm not gonna just do you, but I see Jason Michael showed up, and he's with El Mirage, Arizona, and he uses tagging to a great degree. I, Jason, if you don't have a problem, I'd love to drag you into this and 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 have you speak if you don't mind doing that. And he's spoken before, so I'm assuming his answer is he does not mind. All right. Yes, indeed. All right. Let's do it. Look, look at this. Let's talk about spinning on a dime here. Let me get uh, one second here. Uh, hold on, Jason, stay right there. All right, Jason. All right, Jason, I'm going to promote you to a panelist. All right, Jason, you should now be able to speak. Can you hear me, Jason? You're muted. So, and again, I don't like to do these things hair trigger like this, but we'll see if Jason get himself unmuted, but we'll keep moving along here and maybe he'll hop on. So yes, to uh, whoever said that, uh, Stephanie, yes, we will definitely dig into who uses them and, and why. And Jason told me he doesn't have a microphone. So, all right, Jason, well, if you don't have a microphone, we cannot hear what you have to say, but you can post in here, maybe it may be put in a question window, how do you primarily use tags? That, that might be a good thing, Jason, if you wouldn't mind going in there and just go ahead and put, why the heck do you use tags at, at your department? All right, well, let me keep rolling along and let's get into, first of all, wh where would we use a tag at? Now, you definitely, I, by default, tagging is turned on in your software. You don't have to do anything to turn it on, but the permissions wrapped around it do matter. So, for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into my permission groups for just a moment. All right, so we go to settings and we go to permission groups. By the way, this thing will be recorded and posted out there so that you don't have to write all this down or quickly take screenshots. You can go back through and watch this again later. But I'm going to pick my read-only permission group that is in that is in my particular system. You will have your own permission groups. You have, certainly will have less than I do. I have a lot of permission groups in here. Um, but down at the very bottom, there's this section for tags. This is where you will go in and determine who in your, your organization can Thank you use all tags for joining me today. And um, if they can use them, you know, we, what are like they we able to use them We got finished a little for? bit earlier than I, I think expected. That it was most a fairly short webinar today. In our so once again, I, I got think you all for joining. Like I, do right I hope here. you all have By a default, wonderful Thanksgiving coming up. And do everything you, uh, all the time. So these Lost permissions down and here don't apply out, to me. It applies to everybody Thanks else. Thanks again, in your everyone, for joining the webinar. And if uh, you uncheck these with boxes us again next to time. view organization bye tags bye. and everything else in this row of tagging, that means they will not show up in your system at all, other than your use of it. So those check boxes on there mean other people within my organization will be able to use tags. I want to highly, highly suggest that you keep tagging to a minimum. You don't want everybody in your organization to have access to tags, because if you do, they're going to do the thing like I suggested earlier when I was looking at that one client. They're just going to start dumping stuff into that tag field, and then they're going to become unusable. So I would generally, unless it's somebody you trust or there's a reason you need to open it up to everybody, you're going to really minimize the use of tags. However, by checking this view organization tags checkbox, that means everybody in your organization will be able to view the tags that you've applied or anybody else would have applied. 
So that might be an acceptable, uh, you know, addition to using tagging is, hey, I want other people to be able to see it. But you really want to control who can create these tags over here on the right and then who can attach and detach tags. So just keep in mind, this is where you'll go into, that's under settings, permission groups, tags at the bottom. That's where you will control how your organization can interact with tags at all. All right, so let's go into, so now that you've seen how to, how to control some of the aspects of who can use tags, at the very top of your screen, the fourth icon in is gonna be a tag option. If you don't see that tag, it, there is one other area where you can turn tags off entirely, and that is, I believe, under form fields, yes, under this section right here. If you go in and uncheck tagging to be visible, that option is going to go away entirely. So um, I think if I refresh my screen, hopefully I'm saying this correctly. Um, that did not, do I have to save that? Let me make sure I save that. Okay, so it must be not visible to anybody else, but because I've got them turned on in my organization, I'm seeing them. So you definitely want to make sure that tags are visible, then all those other permissions will apply. Once you have those turned on, then you can click that fourth icon in right there and you'll be taken to what is the tagging screen in our system. Now, admittedly, mine's a little dirty in here. You can see all these different tags that I've got. I'm gonna go in and simply create a new tag and I'm gonna call this a test tag. All right, and, and I'm gonna show you how this works here for just a moment. Now, a little while ago, I mentioned the idea of colors. I'm really, really, I'm one of those huge fans of, of creating colors. It just, I think when, it, it should mean something. I wouldn't just create tags to be a different color, but like if something was a, uh, like a murder or a sane kit or something like that, I may put a tag in there that's red so that it really stands out. All right. So in this case, I've created a tag called test tag. I've made it an organization tag. We're gonna come back to what an organization group and user tag is here in a few moments. But for right now, I'm gonna make it an organization tag, which means anybody with the ability to create a tag at the org level will be able to create a tag or use a tag or whatever other permissions you've applied. But this is a, a, a organization wide tag. And now I'm gonna save it. And so I believe if I do a search for the word test now, test tag, there's the tag that I created. And I can also see that this tag has not been applied against any items or any cases, and it shouldn't be. I just created it. So that's not shocking at all. But now the question becomes, how do I apply this tag to things? So keep in mind, first thing we do is create the tag, then we apply the tag, then we search and do reporting on the tag. And then I'll finish up with how do we mass update these things. So that's a pretty simple tag right there. I've created a test tag. Now, what I'm going to do for simplicity's sakes, I'm just going to open up a case in my system that's already there, and there are four items on this case. Now, notice down here at the bottom, I am not seeing any tag. Well, I'm not. There are no tags applied right here. So I've got one of a couple of options. If I want, I can say edit tag, and I'm going to apply this test tag to that right there. And so now when I save it, there's the tag applied. Now, many times you're not going to want to do these one at a time. I'm gonna go in and say, I want to mass update this information, all right? And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, uh, excuse me, I did something wrong. Okay, so now I'm gonna update this and I'm gonna say, I do wanna apply a tag and I'm gonna do test tag. Sorry, I'm typing too fast, there it is. And now I'm gonna hit okay. And so now what you'll see is look at that, I applied that test tag to all four items. So right now in my system, there are four items that have had that tag applied. And just to make this stand out, we're gonna go into another case real quick and I'm gonna open up one item right here and I'm gonna apply that test tag to that also. Now, test tag may be a bad example because it doesn't have any relevance to it, but, but these tags, in fact, when I show you um, what, what El Mirage has created or even Megan, you'll see like some different tagging mechanisms that they use. Now that I've applied that tag, here's what I'm able to do. When I go in to do a search against items, and now I go down to the tag field, I can say, hey, give me a list of all items where that test tag has been applied. Oh, that's the wrong one. And see, that color really stood out to me. I was like, wait a minute, that's not pink. 
there's my test tag, now it's pink. And so when I say, yes, give me all the results, I'm gonna now see there are all five items in the system that have that tag applied. Now, admittedly, if you're not searching for anything more specific than just the word found property, in reality, you may just use the drop down menu because you can do a search on all items that are found property. Tagging allows you to just be more flexible than what the fields are that are that are that are on the drop down menus. Now, I will say if if hey Jason, uh, so Jason actually responded and uh, I, well actually somebody totally else responded. Um, somebody said, speaking for me, I have found tags to be very helpful for noting special circumstances for cases. Uh, as they involve a special team, uh, our, our, our international scope or subject to a legal hold, still trying to figure out use for item tags. So the, I thought the word special circumstances right there really matter. I wanna be able to go in and do a search for things and, 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 and that special circumstance is gonna come back like what I have right here. And again, you can have dozens of tags. They can be very, very different, but the purpose of it in the end is always gonna be, I wanna search and have that data come back. Now, Jason, I hope you don't mind. I actually wanna flip over to your system. I'm gonna flip into El Mirage here real quick. And I just wanna look at your list of tags that you've created. And I don't think that you had a whole lot of them. I think, yeah, you have 39 total tags. So in your case, I mean, look, look at these different tags that they have created, third party release needed. And oh, by the way, when you're in this tag view, you can see how many items that are not disposed of have this tag applied to it. So right here, I can see that this, whatever this tag means, EP, uh, EMPD equipment, there are 52 items that have that tag to it. And oh, by the way, notice the colors. So the red one really stood out to me. So right now he has got 672 items that have the homicide tag applied to it. And I guarantee you the reason he's applied that tag is because it's nice and big and red and it's gonna stand out when he's looking at those items. So if he were to go in and do a search and say, hey, I'm, I'm looking for a, well, here, let's do this. I'm gonna bring up one of those cases real quick because this is gonna be really awesome. So I'm gonna bring up this case right here. I hope you're all right with this, Jason. If not, you can call and yell at me again later. So here's a homicide case in their system. There are 39 items in this case. And so when I bring them up, I assume that that, that tag is gonna stand out. Well, I'm not even, I don't even have tags turned on for this site. So this is good to know too. If you go to menu customization under options, you can turn on tags if they're not displayed in this view. And so now I've turned them on. And even more importantly, I want the tags to be at the very beginning of the menu. So I'm gonna drag those things over because I really want my tags to stand out. So now notice that I can see right there in plain view, here's all of my items that are relating to a homicide. And that's exactly why he's done that is because it's red and it stands out. And, and it could be you have multiple tags applied to these things. You can have an unlimited number of tags applied to a specific item, but just imagine for a moment, all of a sudden now you got this coloring, you got this thing that stands out, you know, you can create any one of a number of different tags. And all of a sudden viewing a list of items really become, stands out. It becomes really important. In fact, even when I see this disposition received right here, my guess, my guess is this is a list of items that he is he's preparing. He may have sent out an order to get a disposition on these things and they've been approved. And so now when it comes time to disposing of evidence, he's probably just gonna go in and say, okay, let me see if every item in the system that has that disposition received on it. And now these are already disposed of. So maybe that's an old tag and it's still applied, but nonetheless, that's what's in there. Okay, so you begin to get a little bit of a feel as to, as to why you might use some of these, these different tags in here. But this is really important, A, to create valid tags, definitely color code them, and then now you see how to apply them. Again, you can apply them to an individual item or you can select a whole bunch of items and do a mass update and then you can apply a bunch of tags that way. All right. Megan, anything you want to add to all that? I know I'm on a I'm, I'm on a soapbox run here, but is, is there anything you'd like to add based on anything I said there? No, you're doing great. Okay, fantastic.
Well, let me go back. I do need to consult my notes here very, very quickly because I get to talking very fast. And so let me flip this back up and let me get my notes in here. Sorry, one second. Okay. So what is the tag? Why would I use a tag? Uh, okay. Well, let's get into what I'd like to dig into is the, um, you know what? Let's let's flip over to Megan's screen now. Megan, what I'd really like you to do is is I want to talk about dashboarding but I really want you to show off your screen and how you've done your dashboard, because this is really impressive. This, this is good stuff. So I'm gonna make Megan the presenter. So Megan, now we're gonna find out how well you talk and navigate a, a mouse and a keyboard. And there are people on here that are sweating at the thought of doing that, but I expect you're <laughs> gonna do well. Yeah, so this is my dashboard and I've got a bunch of widgets set up. Like I said, I normally use tags for billing purposes since I'm in charge of everyone's evidence. Um, can you can you show us your tags real quick? Can you can you go to the tags menu up there? And, and I just want to see what tags you've created because I don't, I, I mean, you do have a lot of tags. So um, we're, we're looking and you have a lot of items applied to all of those tags, maybe so here's a list of some of the tags you've created. And it looks like you apply a lot of them to your, your, your cases or your projects in your case. Yeah. Yep. Because they all apply to the evidence items within. So I just throw it right on the project uh, page instead of okay, to the individual I items. So um, remember, you can apply a tag to a case or an item or both. But yeah, so here is. So now why? I'm just curious. Why did you make that one yellow there? Why did you? Why yellow? So this is if I had sent a letter to an insured and I got no response. It was just to, all of these are important, but yeah. I wanted the ones in color to really stand out and that's what I'm yeah. looking for. So I know if there's 14 projects that I have no response and now I have to do something about that. Yeah. Um, this is more for informational purposes. If it's colored, it's normally because it needs my response. Yeah. Um, and then and you know what else is interesting i'll toss out right now as i see that everything that is being done here you can accomplish with custom forms and you can still do mass update but you just don't get the flexibility and and i i don't think i'm underdoing this the color coding is so important and you cannot color code custom fields so creating tags are very simple it's it's just far more flexible and important than using it a custom form. And I'm just, did you ever consider using a custom form or did you move to tagging at some point? Why did you land at tagging? Um, yeah, I guess I don't really know what you're talking about for a custom form. Okay, well, so when you create an item, you can have custom forms that are custom fields that show up on the screen. So um, you may not even have any custom forms in your system. So that that might be why why you wouldn't know what that is, and that's all right. I do know that our support team heavily pushes tagging. So I'm I'm assuming you learned all of this in your training. Yes, absolutely. Okay. The, the, um, but you've obviously taken it and run with it because I man, I love this. Like when I look at that, I can tell right off the bat that that light blue right there is these things have been keyed up for something with, with billing purposes. So, I mean, this is fantastic. Right. So as far as our SOP goes, um, starting this year, we began billing for evidence on an annual basis before we were doing it on a quarterly basis. So then I needed to create all these tags as far as an annual um, billing yeah. cycle. So, and also our newest SOP says that when we collect evidence, we're going to wait three months before we actually start charging for it. And that's a long time for me to remember to charge for that. It's, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to remember in November that I added something in August. It's just not going to happen. So yeah. that's why I've added these tags to these projects. So then when, you know, August comes around, that what's where we're at now, I can click right here and I know all the projects that I need to bill for this month. Wow, yeah. Um, same thing with disposing of evidence. I'll add a tag with the month that I've gotten approval to dispose from the client. Mm -hmm. And according to our SOP, we have to wait three months to dispose of the evidence item. So again, I can look in and then there's probably hasn't been disposed of yet. Um, and there's probably a tag in that on that project saying why. Um, yeah. And then I've also got. 
That's so for every question. for everybody that's listening that you have nothing to do with billing or things like that, this is absolutely applicable to disposition. And like um, I do know that I'm, I'm thinking of Krista at Des Moines where they do they do dispositions twice a year, and so she'll have tags that are that are literally like dispose of in January 2023 or whatever it is so that when January 2023 comes around she'll run a report on every item that's been tagged with that thing and that's her list of things she's going to begin to process wow yeah. that's that, that's really fantastic Megan so um anything else you want to show in here or I do want to get back to the dashboard and, and show off your use so in your dashboard how are you well yeah, let's just look at your dashboard here real quick and we'll we'll look at some of how you got this thing set up right now. Yeah, so yeah, I'm based out of Voorheesville, New York. So I get asked a lot, you know, how many evidence items are specifically in Voorheesville? So I can tell you right off the bat, I know there's 860 pieces. They all go to 276 projects. Um, just the other day, I was asked to make a spreadsheet for um, the revenue that my storage location is bringing in so far in 2022. So what I did was added a tag to all of the projects that I've built for in 2022. Waiting. This is how it works when you get on a webinar and start to show things off, then all of a sudden your system starts running slow. That That is, that's a guarantee to happen every time you run that. Wow, holy cow, look at all that. Yes, so this is why I pull this up is because, you know, I know for a fact this was built in 2022, but what else did we do with this? It got built in uh, 2020 yeah. fourth quarter. This is when we were doing the quarter system. Um, this is a charge that uh, everybody puts wow. in. I know that it needs to be charged at an extra small rate. I know that it got billed um, May 2021 for a lab fee. And we also started uh, billing just a small amount for like evidence handling and disposal. So I know this project also got that charge applied. Um, wow. yeah, that goes that all the right way there is a high level usage of tagging. There is no doubt about it. And I also like you have taggings right there at the beginning of the screen. I mean, clearly this shows the importance of your tagging because you got them front and center. Yes, I look at them a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, so also from here, what I like to do is uh, just export and create an Excel spreadsheet. And that way I can kind of cut off the information that's not important, only apply the information that is. Um, another thing that I'll do is every year I create a revenue for all of the evidence that we have throughout the country. So what I'll do is I'll up, I'll make a search for projects and I'll just use Voorheesville here as an example. Um, so what I'll do is already searching. So build for 2022, but then I also, all right, I didn't click that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so you can break these for you because you have multiple offices where you're storing evidence. Now you can go in and 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 run searches on all this stuff everywhere. Right. So I can see right yep. out of Voorheesville. I want to know everything that was charged for small in 2022. Wow. And then yep. from there, it's going to give me a number and I can simply just multiply that number by what we charge for a small item and have yeah. that number really quickly. I'm so even thinking for police and law enforcement, like a perfect example of something similar to that would be, you know, when you send out disposition notices and having different tags and you can see that stuff accumulate over time. Like I sent out notice number one, I sent out notice number two, you know, it's just, I mean, the, the, the use cases for this would be endless for sure. Yeah. And this one here, I can see that it was not billed for 2022, but I've got a note in here saying that it's waiting for a disposition release form. Yeah. So I don't even have to go look in other systems. I already know why I haven't charged for it. Yeah. Wow. That was really fantastic. 
So did you, I didn't notice on your dashboard, if we could flip back to your dashboard for just a minute, do you have any widgets or menus that, that literally the, the search results are based on a tag versus, I, I guess is, is all of that right there, the yearly billing, that's all based on tags, right? These are all based on tags, yeah. So then I can go to, for example, I still need to do August. So I can click on August and everything that needs to be billed for in August and then just bill yeah. for it. Wow. Man, see that is police and law enforcement, private entity, whatever. I, I always say, I think the, the best uses of our system is when you're on top of your information like that. When you've got widgets and menus that show details like what you're seeing right here, I mean, you just pop in every day and you can see exactly what's going on. And that's not the end of your screen too. If you scroll down a little bit more, is there anything else you've got in here based on tags? Based on tags. So. For example, the Charlotte evidence, um, I think I have to update my tags for this, but uh, there's 22 items in Charlotte, two of them are non-billable, and then I've got this widget that, or this search that says, why is it not billable? Um, and then I can click on that and figure out why. So how I made them though is I added, you know, all of these, if it was for yeah. January yearly billing, February, um, and that's how I got to that. Yeah. That's fantastic. My accident reconstruction group is brand new. So they've got a lot of them that are not billable. I know that they are, they're fine. <laughs> yeah. <I laughs> they're just you. confined. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. No, this is, this is really good. There's a lot of information on the screen right there. And that, that ultimately, in the end, anything that helps you better organize your evidence and get it moving along. And, and in your case, we're talking about billing, you know, that, and that's so crucial for that, for a police department. It's just getting the stuff out of the room to begin with and, and better setting things up to where, you know, you're moving things along is, is the ultimate objective with all of this. But tagging is such a, a crucial element to getting that thing done. So yeah, I don't see any the other questions rolling in. Is anybody, I mean, now's a great time to, to throw out there. The only thing I did not cover, and, and we did not cover creating dashboard widgets. Um, I, I will say that that's a different topic for a different day, but if you don't know how to create these dashboard windows, like what, what Megan's got here, that's clearly very detailed right there. But once you create your tags and get all of your searching ready, then you can create these dashboard elements that show all of this stuff. And I know that a lot of our clients have some really elaborate dashboards with, with all sorts of this stuff on there. It's unfortunate you can't color code those two. That'd be really cool if somehow you could color code all that. I just like color coding, so I don't know if that's come out or not. All right. Well, let's, I, I guess the one other thing, I, I, Meg, anything else you want to toss out? I mean, I do appreciate you showing all that off here. And um, I see somebody, somebody asked a question, is there an easy way to convert a personal tag to an org, ta org tag? Uh, we, learned, uh, we learned that a slow internet created duplicates. So I'm not, I'm guessing somehow you got duplicate tags created. I do know that you cannot, you cannot change a, a tag type to a different tag type. So what you would have to do in that scenario is create, so if, if it was a personal tag and you wanted to make it an org, you would create the same tag within the org and then you would mass update every item that had the, the tag you want to get rid of into the new one. And so you're, you're, you can't move the tag around, but in the same way, you're just, you're mass updating things and moving into the new tag. So that's, that's how you would accomplish that. And I guess I do want to explain real quick. I'm going to take the screen back and, and, and show my screen off here for this last thing. It, it, it is worth noting, what is the difference between an org tag, a, uh, a group tag, or a private tag? Okay, and so for most of you, and in almost every scenario, you're just gonna use org tags. That means I want them available at the org level, I determine who sees them, who doesn't. Um, the only time you would get into group tags or private tags is if you wanted to really limit who could see them. So for example, a private tag 
would not be available to anybody else. So may, maybe you're dealing with sensitive information or maybe the tag itself is sensitive in nature and you don't want there to be any chance that somebody else in your organization is gonna see that tag. You could create a private tag. It's gonna get applied just like, just like these other ones get applied. It's just, it's only gonna be shown to you because it's private to you. And by the way, the icon will be different on here if you create a private tag. And so let me here, I'm still in El Mirage. Let me go back to my tracker HQ here. All right, let me go into tagging. So for most of you, because you're only doing org-based tags, it's gonna look like that calculator right there, which actually happens to be a building, like an organization building. And so there are group tags and private tags. Let me see if I can find one of those real quick. And of course, there's nothing in here very quick and easy. I will tell you this, the, the group tag will have a picture of two people on it. The private tag will be a picture of one person. So, you know what, I might be able to sort by this list over here. See, I've got no private or personal tags in here. Let's just create one real quick. So I'm gonna make a user or a private tag, test two. Let me save that. All right, so there, there is not the private. Which one did I just create? See, I got to do this a little bit slower. I'm just moving so fast in here. If you go all the way over to like the ninth page, it will show you the last one you created. Okay. Well, I'm in yes, my org. I've only, oh, here. So let, let me do, hold on. I want to do show all tags. All right, let's try that. I think because we'll you're to, still searching test. Oh, see, good job, Megan. I'm just, Megan, I'm just testing you right here. There's the private or the user tag. It's got a picture of one person on it. The group tag has two. See, look, Megan's training me. This is really fantastic, Megan. But there is the test tag that I just created and it's got, it's, it's got an individual picture in there. So again, remember, a user or a private tag is just me a group tag is just a group of people that I've assigned it to. So like, let's say you've determined in your organization, everybody's gonna have access to seeing every tags, but I've got more than one evidence administrator and we wanna have our own tag that only people in that group can see. You can go in and create groups and then you can apply tags based on a group of people. I really don't believe most of you are gonna use a user or a group tag, but that's what they're there for. I think the bulk of you are gonna use org tags and whether or not people can see them is up to you, but that's what they're gonna get used for. Okay, Sharon said that makes sense. So I guess my answer on how to mass update to change the tags is how you would do that. Um, oh yeah, I gotta cover workflows real quick. I almost forgot that. So Justin posted a question. I've noticed that recent updates have added attaching and detaching tags to workflows, a to-do on my experiment list is to automatically detach the quote for destruction tag on items after item disposable. Is that a use case? That's a fantastic use case, Justin. So just to reiterate what he's stating right there. So what he'll do, in fact, if we go back to that El Mirage a minute ago, remember when, when we had in, let me just bring that up. And we'll, we'll just show that use case right there and then I'll do a workflow. So in El Mirage, he had uh, this tag in here called uh, disposition received. And so I, I made the incorrect statement earlier of this list only shows disposed items or only active items. That's not true. That number 10 right there is every item in the system that has that tag applied to it, regardless of the status of the item. And so when I went into there, I saw 10 items that are all disposed of. So I'm guessing Jason at El Mirage would say, I don't want that tag there anymore. I'm not gonna remove it, Jason. I'm just, I, my guess is he doesn't want that tag applied because those items have all been removed. They've all been disposed of. So if under workflow, let's go into system. Uh, hold on, I gotta go settings maybe, workflows. You could create a workflow that looks just like this. Uh, I'm gonna name this, remove dispo tag upon disposition. Okay, I'm gonna base this on items. And what I wanna do is I wanna attach or detach tags. I wanna detach that disposition tag. Let me see if I can find that. Disposition receipt. I'm not gonna save this, Jason. I'm just showing this off. 
But if Jason had a workflow in here that was like this, every time an item is processed, I want attach, I want to detach tags if, and let's go down here, if disposal, let's do an item transaction, if a disposal takes place. So Justin, that scenario you just threw out to me, I want a tag detached upon disposition of an item. If I saved that right there for Jason, next time he ran a disposition, it would take every item that was a part of that disposition. And if that tag was there, it would remove it automatically. And he would not have to manually go in and remove those. So yes, perfect scenario. And keep in mind with workflow, I'm, I'm showing you how you can attach and detach tags. I've also seen like, for example, uh, you know, some people will go in and say, hey, every time an item is created, that's this option right here, I want this tag, or maybe you've got a tag called new item. So may maybe you as an administrator want to get a, a list of every item that's brand new to find out if you've processed it or not. So, so could you run a report on all the items created in the last day? Yes, you could. But how would you know if you have processed those items and handled them properly other than moving them into the evidence room? If you had a tag called new item, and then when you went in and did whatever work you do on those items and you remove that tag when it was done, even if that item was less than a day old, that tag not being there would let you know, hey, I worked on that thing. Or you could even get crazy. Here's another one. You could have a tag called cash edited. Okay. So then if somebody went in and edited an item where the category is uh hold on one second here oh i got i've got to add the filter down here at the bottom i believe matching criteria yes i want category equals currency watch this if i did this one right here i'm basically saying every time an item is edited just that field and the item equals currency i want to attach a cash edited tag now, all of a sudden, you could run a report on every item that has been edited that is currency. You could even go a step further and say, I want an email to go out. I want a text message to go out. I also want to create a new task when that thing happens. This workflow is a session all in and of itself. I mean, this is a very, very powerful feature that not a lot of people are using, but this is where you begin to automate the process of, a, of attaching or detaching those tags. And so in Justin's example, yes, absolutely perfect example. Disposition takes place, remove that tag, I'm off and running. So I've put Jason at El Mirage on the spot. I, I want to see an email from him when you've created that tag to automatically remove those dispo things. Uh, in fact, if anybody needs help with that, uh, certainly email me or contact any of our support people. They're happy to help you work through some of these workflow things when it comes to tagging. It's, it takes tagging, which I think I've already said a couple of times, it's really, really important. and takes it up to an even higher level of importance. All right, I don't have anything else to present, but I am for sure, I, I'm just curious, Megan, to put you on the spot one last time. Does that showing that workflow off, is that is that something you knew about and you're, and you're just not using or does this possibly open up a, a, a new world of things? It's definitely something that I'm gonna have to consider now. I do have a couple of workflows of my own um, that have nothing to do with tagging purposes, but I do have it set up that if items are created by investigators um, in or around like the Redmond, Washington area, then that evidence manager out of Redmond, Washington gets emailed every time a new item is added or edited. So that's gotcha. how I use workflows. Yeah. Like I said, workflow is a conversation all in and of itself, but but it, it, it is valid to discuss it here because you, you gotta know that that exists with workflow. Okay, any final questions before we wrap it up here today? Megan, thank you so much for being willing to hop on here with me today. You were you were a fantastic panelist. Oh, thank you, and thanks for having me. Yes, absolutely.
Okay, I'm seeing nothing else come in. So everybody, thank you for showing up here today. I hope this was valuable and you learned something. And if, if as always, if you need any help at all, just please let us know. We're, we're here to serve. All righty. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.